It's the end of a payroll year, so it's time to prepare and give your employees their payment summaries and send these details to the ATO. You then need to close the payroll year, install an update and load your tax tables before you process pays for July. In this video, we'll give you an overview of what you need to do and answer some questions along the way. If you need more help, we recommend joining our trainer-led webcast that steps through these tasks in more detail. Before you go any further, make sure you've entered all your pays for June. But what if a pay run ends in July but is paid in June? No probs, it's the payment date that determines when it gets reported. So, if the payment's made in June, then it'll be included in the payment summaries for the current payroll year. Next, you should check that your payroll information is correct. You can check by comparing your payroll register report, which shows all the amounts that will appear on your payment summaries, with your payroll activity report, which shows all the amounts paid using the process payroll assistant. The totals on these reports should agree. If they don't, it means the pay history in an employee's card has been altered. This can happen if you've entered opening balances during the year, but if you haven't, you should take a closer look. The pay history balances will then be used for the payment summaries. When the payroll information is correct, you're ready to prepare them. You need to give your employees their payment summaries by July 14, but in account right, you need to prepare them before you record the first pay run in July, no matter how early that is. Don't have the time to prepare them before your first pay run in July? That's okay. Just make a backup of your file, give it a name you'll remember, and when you're ready, restore this backup file and use it to just prepare your payment summaries. Now, let's prepare our summaries. Go to the Payroll Command Centre and click here. The assistant will step you through what you need to do. And there's more help if you need it along the way to make sure you get it right. Start by checking that your company details are correct and enter any missing details. This next step is the most important. It's where you need to link the ATO payment summary fields to your payroll categories. Here's some tips to help you out. Go through each of the payment summary fields on the left and choose which of your account right payroll categories need to be reported there. For example, the gross payments field typically includes wage type categories like base hourly, base salary, bonus, annual leave and personal leave. But you might need to include more depending on the payroll categories you use in your business. And what about salary sacrifice? You need to exclude these amounts from gross payments. You do this by selecting the payroll category you use to record salary sacrifice amounts. This will reduce an employee's gross payment amount by the amount they sacrificed. If you pay allowances, they will be reported separately in one of the available fields and you can add a description as well. Note that a payroll category can only be linked to one of the payment summary fields. So, once it's been linked to a field, it will be greyed out and can't be selected again. And not all the fields will apply to you. So, if you're not sure what goes where or what to include at each payment summary field, then it's best to check with the ATO. Like, if an employee leaves during this payroll year, you need to work out whether their final payment gets reported as a lump sum or if it's part of an employment termination payment summary and you'll use these fields instead. The next couple of steps may not be relevant to you. However, if your employees made superannuation contributions that need to be reported to the ATO, then link the superannuation category that you used to record these contributions. Or 
enter the amounts manually here. And if it applies, the next step is where you enter any reportable fringe benefit amounts that your employees have earned. Then, review each employee's payment summary details. Every employee must have a valid tax file number before you can continue. And if it's an ETP summary, there's some additional info you'll enter here. Then you're ready to print them or save them as a PDF to send by email. And remember, you must do this by the 14th of July. By saving them, you'll always have a copy to go back to should you need to resend or print them again. The payment summary totals are now displayed. The verification report gives you the details that will be reported to the ATO for each employee. This information will be used to create the ATO file in the next step. Create the file for the ATO and send it to them by the 14th of August. The quickest and most secure way to do this is to submit it electronically using the ATO business portal but you'll need to be registered to use this service. Finally, it's always good to do a backup and you're done. Next, before you can start entering pays for July, you need to close off the payroll year that just finished. It's pretty easy. From the file menu, select to close a payroll year. The assistant takes you through the steps. There's not much to do. Just make sure the details are correct and take a backup if you haven't already done so. Why? When you close a payroll year, the pay history for that year is removed from the employee card. So you'll need to restore this backup if later you need to amend your payment summaries. Then confirm you want to close off the payroll year. Now it's time to get ready for the new payroll year. Update your software to make sure your business complies with all the latest changes, including any new payroll tax table changes. You'll need to load them to correctly calculate employees' tax for the new year. Oh, and one more thing. While we're talking about payroll, are you up with the latest ATO superannuation changes? Employers are now required to report and pay super electronically. The good news is that the Pay Super feature in AccountRight is SuperStream compliant and easy to use. It'll save you time and meet your obligations. If you're using AccountEdge or an older version of AccountRight, we've also got a SuperStream solution for you. Go to this website to find out what you need to do. If you need more detail on how to close your payroll year, visit this website or join our webcast.